morning, everybody. Hope y'all having a good week. You know it's early. Time is like 7.47. Big Friday. Yeah. Hope y'all having a good morning so far. God bless y'all. First of all, all glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven. Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet Holy Spirit. Don't know honor, glory, and praise go to me. Uh, glory and praise and honor go to who is due. Sweet Holy, uh, sweet Lord Jesus, <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit of God, my Father in heaven. All right. You know, I know each and every single day, Lord Jesus said, Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow won't worry about itself. <laughs> yep. Nobody perfect. I fall short each and every single day. The Bible says in Romans 3 20. Uh, I want to be wrong still early. I got to wake up. I ain't drunk all my coffee yet. So y'all be patient with me. Got it right here. And Romans 3.23 say, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Verse 24 say, And all are justified freely by his grace. Through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Amen. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood. One drop of his blood is enough. He shed it all to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness for, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're going to do this every day until we go in that casket. In this world, we're going to have many troubles. People wonder why I hold on to the word the way I do. But first of all, Got your Bible with me, turn to Isaiah 26. With me, say amen. I know a lot of y'all ain't known right now, but I'm with you. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Brother Isaiah says, speaking of the Lord, you will keep him, you will keep in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord Himself is the rock eternal. Amen. <clears throat> Isaiah 26, verse 3 said, You will keep in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. We're going to have pro problems and troubles in this world. Jesus said in John 16, uh, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me, only in Jesus Christ, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. All right. Philippians chapter 4. Brother Paul said, uh, y'all bear with me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 say, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Only in Jesus Christ, man. Stand in the Lord. Uh, those who trust in him. He said, here, keep him perfect peace. Word. Every day, something else. But that's another point. Stay in God's word, and it is a peace that'll come over your mind and your heart, unlike anything else you can't explain. And ain't nobody got to explain to you. I love it. I, I'm, I'm imperfect. I mess up every day. I get angry, upset, this and that. But uh, yesterday is gone. Today is here. And tomorrow has its own problems coming. Amen. But uh. Tell me the Hebrews. I'm told y'all we're gonna get through this Genesis thing. We're gonna read through the whole book. Uh, I don't want to skip over nothing. I like I bring up a little points every now and then, but I'm gonna let the Lord do his thing. But uh I'm gonna throw a verse in in the morning and then we're just gonna go to the word. Alright. Y'all bear with me. God bless y'all. Hebrews chapter eleven, verse one say. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. All right. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 say, Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. All right. And then go with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verses... Uh, Verses 4 through 12. 
And then we go on to the we going back to Genesis. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter twelve. We're gonna go through some. Sometimes the Lord uh allows us to go through some. But listen to the verses. Hebrews chapter twelve, verses four through twelve say in your struggle against sin, because it is a struggle day by day. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. You ain't committed suicide yet. It's a hard world out here. A lot of people are. Read the verses. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastises everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship is discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. <laughs> Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. Amen. How much more should we submit to the father's spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, <laughs> not at all, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Yes, it does. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Amen. Do not make, my son, do not make light the Lord's discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes you. <laughs> because the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and he chastises everyone he accepts as his son. All right. We all got to go through some things. And don't lose heart. I go through things every day that it makes somebody wonder and ask why this and that. But God knows best more than my knowledge above anything. He took Job through something. And at the end of the book, Job said, I know you can do all things. There's some things people still got to learn what God can do. I'm speaking to myself too. And when I close my eyes, I just want to hear seven words. Seven words. You can't pay for them. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Turn them to Genesis 11. We're going to take off where we left off. All right. If you got your book with me later on, you get there. Say amen. God bless you. Now the whole world, Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech at the time. As people move eastward. They found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. They said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Uh, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speak in the same language, they have began to do this, then nothing they plan to do would be impossible for them. You'd be surprised what happened when people can come together. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they would not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them all over the face of the earth. <clears throat> Says so these people were trying to build a city that reached to the heavens. They was trying to make a name for themselves. They said, come, let us build a city and uh, with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we make a name for ourselves. Only God can make a name for you. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the earth. <laughs> you was going to get scattered over the face of the earth anyway. They were trying to reach the heaven. There's only one way to get to heaven. That's by God, God alone. <laughs> but 
But the Lord came down to see the city. And he's like, oh, okay, these people are fine. They're trying to they see what they're doing. But the Lord confused them. Uh, <laughs> that's another story I'll break down to you another day. This is the account, verse 10. Genesis 11, verse 10. This is the account of Shem's family line. Two years after the flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of a, a Praxad. And after he became the father of a Praxad, Shem lived 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When a Praxad had lived 35 years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, a Praxad lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah lived 30 years, he became the father of Eben. And he became the father, and after he became the father of Eber, Sheba, Sheila lived 403 years. Y'all forgive me with these names, but I got to read them. Uh, uh, and when Eber lived 34 years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber, Eber lived 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg lived 30 years, he became the father of Ruth. And after he became the father of Ruth, they lay leg 209 years. And after and he had other sons and daughters. And when Ruth had lived 32 years, he became the father of Serug. And after he became the father of Serug, Ruth lived 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Serug lived 30 years, he became the father of Nor. And after he became the father of Nor, Serug lived 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nor lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah. And Terah became, the, and after he had became the father of Terah, Noah lived 119 years and had other sons and daughters. And after Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram. And he became the father of Abram, Noah, and Haran. <clears throat> and this is the account of Terah's family line. Terah became the father of Abram, Noah, and Haran. And Haran became the father of Lot, while his father Terah was still alive. Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abram and Nora both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the wife of Nora's was Melchiah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Melchiah and Issachar. Now Sarai was childless because she was not able to, to conceive. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, uh, son of Haran and his daughter-in-law Sarah, the wife of his son Abram, and together they went out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived two hundred and five years, and he died in Haran. Genesis chapter twelve say. Then the Lord said to Abram, "Go from your country, and from your people, to your father's household, to the land I will show you, and I'll make you into a great nation, and I'll bless you." I make your name great, and you'll be a blessing. And I bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. It's a uh, <clears throat> when the Lord told him this, Abraham went as the Lord had told him. The Lord said, "All peoples on earth will be blessed through you, and this will be accomplished by Jesus Christ." Uh, the Lord told Abraham to leave his his country, his people, his father's house. So sometimes the Lord calls you away from your people. Well, you know when you got good away sometimes. Abraham loved his family, but the Lord called him to get away from his family. Sometimes the Lord called you to do that. Abraham went. <clears throat> he took his nephew Lot with him, though. <laughs> Anytime you take your family with you, you're going to have a little bit of problems. <laughs> True. <laughs> but uh, he loved his nephew. His nephew loved him. He took him with him. <clears throat> Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot and all the possessions they had accumulated and, and the people that had they had accumulated in, in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. <clears throat> Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moriah at Shechem. Abraham left. He didn't even know where he was going. <laughs> I, I, see, hey, I told you I see why Abraham called the father of faith. The Lord said, leave your father's... Uh, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. There is no place on earth God can show you. <laughs> earth is his footstool. Heaven is his throne. 
He is he, he dwells in the heavens. It's like where? He said, Go to the place I'm gonna show you. There is no place on earth that he could physically show Abraham. The place he was to, Abraham was looking forward to the place that God was gonna show him too. He was looking forward to, to heaven, to the place where God was gonna really show him. He took God at his word literally. So Abraham went. <clears throat> Verse six said Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At the time, the Canaanites were there in the land, and the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring, I will give this, this land. I like the way the King James Version reads, because it says, To your seed, and the word seed capitalized, speaking of uh, Jesus to come. To your seed, I will give this land. So he built the altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he went on toward the hills east of, the, of Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west and Ai on the east, there he built the altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So Abram set out and continued toward Negev. <clears throat> All right. Verse ten say, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was was severe. As he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, "I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will say." This is his wife. Uh, they will kill me, but they'll let you live. Say you my sister, so that I'll be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. <laughs> Abraham, he already said, man, I know you're a pretty woman, man. <laughs> when you get down here, these people are going to be on you. <laughs> uh, verse 14 says, when Abraham came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarah was a very beautiful woman. Um, Sarah was 75 years old, I think. And she was an old woman, <clears throat> but they still on her, though. Nevertheless, the woman, Abram came to Egypt, and the Egyptians saw that Sarah was a very beautiful woman. And when the Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to the Pharaoh, and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abraham well for her sake, and Abraham acquired sheep, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants and camels. Abraham wasn't supposed to lie, but he did. Uh, I think one of the commandments, they don't bear false testimony. Yeah. Nevertheless, God didn't get on. But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh <laughs> uh, and his household because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. So Pharaoh summoned Abraham. What have you done to me? He said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her to be my wife. Now and then, here's your wife. <laughs> Take her and go. <laughs> Pharaoh he said the Lord put some diseases on Pharaoh in his household because of Abram's wife. Pharaoh called him like, man, what you do to me? Why didn't you tell me it's your wife, bro? Damn. <laughs> then Pharaoh gave the orders to Abram and his men and sent them on their way with his wife and everything he had. Genesis 13 says, So Abraham went up from Egypt to Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot wasn't. Abraham had become very wealthy in his lifestyle. God, uh, God, the Lord said, I'm a blessing. He left, he left and was faithful to God. He ended up in Egypt with Lot, but God didn't get on him. But he ended up coming out of Egypt with a whole lot of stuff. Verse thir uh, chapter 13, verse 1 says, Abraham left from Egypt. Negev and his wife and everything he had and Lot uh, went what Abraham became very wealthy in livestock and silver and gold. From the Negev he went to the place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai where his tent had been earlier and where he had built the first altar to the Lord. And Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot, who was moving about with them, with Abraham, also had flocks and herds and tents, but he, but the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Abraham's people and Lot's people. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Abraham said to Lot, "Let's not have any quarreling, which means fighting between you and me, or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives." Is not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I go to the right. And if you go to the right, I go to the left. Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zor was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the land 
This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plan of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company, but Abraham lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plains and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. Things ain't always good on either side. They look, go to a place and see, 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 a, town, see a town or a city, think it's popping over there. It ain't popping once you get there. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> uh, the Lord said to Abram, <clears throat> look around. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted with him, look around from where you are to the north and the south, to the east and to the west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the land, through the length and the bread of the land, for I'm giving it to you. So Abraham went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tents. There he built an altar to the Lord. All right. Genesis 14 says, At the time when Am, Am Raphael, king of Shinar, y'all don't laugh at me because of these, well, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> uh, Ariash, whatever that name is, king of Elazar, Kido, Kido Lamar, king, whatever, king of Elam, entitled king of Golian. These kings went to war against Burr, king of Sodom, Bershia, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Admaya, Sheba, king of Zor, don't laugh at me, y'all, Zeborim, and the king of Bela, that is Zor. All these later kings joined forces in the valley of Shittim. That is the Dead Sea Valley. For 12 years, they had been subject to Kedolomar, whatever. But in the 13th year, they rebelled. In the 14th year, Kedolomar Lamar, and the kings allied, allied with him went out and defeated the Raphites and Azertoth, Karnam, the Zerites, and Ham, the Emites, and Shavi. I'm, I'm not messing all these names up. Korathan and the Horites and the hill city of Zir as far as El Paran near the desert. Then they turned their back and went to in Meshaph, that is Kanash, and they conquered the whole territory of the Amalites. Uh, as the Amorites who were living there and as John Tamar. Then the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Admah and the king of... That's a lot of people. And the king of Zebar and the king of Zealand, that is Zor, marched out and drew up their battle lines in the valley of Shedim against the king of Elam and the king of the Geom and the king of Shinar and the king of Elazar. Four kings against five. Long story short. <clears throat> all right. The four kings seized all the good. Verse 11. And uh, Asadim and Gomorrah. And all their food, they went away. They also carried off Abraham's nephew Lot and all his possessions since he was living in Sodom. A man who escaped there reported this to Abraham, the Hebrew. Now Abraham was living near the great trees of Mamre and the Ormite, the Amorite, a brother of Ishkol and Aaron. All who were allied with Abraham. When Abraham heard this, Heard that his relative had been taken captive. He called out 318 trained men born in his household and went to pursuit as far as Dan. During the night, Abraham divided his men to attack them and he routed them, pursuing them as far as Horbuk, north of Damascus. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and his possessions together with the woman and the other people. After Abraham returned from defeating Kador Lamar, and the kings allied with him, the kings of Sodom, came out to meet him in the valley of Shavit, that is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a great priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be God, praise be to God Most High, who delivers your enemies into your hands. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, "Give me the people, and uh, give me the people, and keep the goods for yourself." But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, with raised hand, "I have sworn an oath to the Lord God Most High, Creator of heaven and earth, that I will that I will accept nothing belonging to you, 
not even a thread or a strap or a sandal, so that you would never be able to say, I made Avon rich. I will accept nothing but what men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me, to Abner, Ishko, and Marie. Let them have their share. <clears throat> All right. I know that was a long jump, but y'all bear with me. All right, Genesis 15. So after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield, a very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited to him his righteousness. Uh, he also said to him, I'm the Lord who brought you out of your, out of the Chaldeans to give you this land and take possession of it. But Abraham said, sovereign Lord, how can I know that I gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, bring me a half a goat and a ram, three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought these to him and cut them in two and arranged them the halves opposite of each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcass, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, know for a certainty, that for 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in the country, not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I'll punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward, they will come out with great possession. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried in a good old age in the fourth, gen fourth generation. Your descendants will come back here, for the sin of, sin of the Omorites have not yet been reached to its full measure. When the sun has set and darkness has fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. That was the Lord uh, in that smoking fire pot and the blazing torch. The Holy Spirit accompanied by fire. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said to your descendants, I give you this land from, from the wadi of Egypt of the great, to the great, weather, great river, excuse me, the Urphites and the land of the Canaanites, the Kizites, the Camorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Raphaelites, the Omorites, the Canaanites, the Gershites and the Jeshubites. All right. Genesis 16 say, Now Sarah, Adam's wife, had borne no children yet. Abraham had put his faith in God, but Sarah was still faithless. She had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. <coughs> it was a. Uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna go there with y'all. But she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, the Lord has kept me from having children. The Lord ain't keep you from having children. It just won't your time yet. But once you get carried away and want to do things your way, sometimes he lets you do things your way. But you always mess up when you do do it your way. The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Abraham probably looked. He ain't arguing. With Perhaps I could build a family through her. The Lord was going to build you a family. Abraham agreed to do what Sarah said. And uh, so after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarah took, uh, Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. And when she knew she was pregnant, she became despised to her. She began to despise her mistress. Then Sarah said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. You came to me. <laughs> I'm responsible. <laughs> you are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now she knows she is pregnant, and she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. The slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think is best. Then Sarah mistreated Hagar, so she fled from him. Uh, the, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah, Sarah she said. She answered. The angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. Uh, 
God, God will bless you when you do those things. Agar ain't want to be at a place she didn't want to be in. In fact, she was being mistreated there. But uh, he told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be two numbers to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant, and you will now and you will give birth to a son. You should name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. She gave this, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me, for she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Ber Laha Roar. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore, bore Abram a son, and Abram gave him the name Ishmael to the son he had born. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore, him a son, bore, him a, uh, bore Ishmael. All right. Abraham messed up. He wasn't doing things God's way. Uh, Abraham was faithful to God. And Sarah came to him with the great idea to sleep with my girl. And uh, he committed adultery. God ain't stopping. He ain't get on him. He let it happen. But Genesis 17, God is a faithful, holy God. I'm speaking to myself, too. God knows and he sees everything. He knows when we ain't walking the right way. I'm speaking to myself. Genesis 17 says, uh, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. And then I'll make my covenant between me and you, and I will greatly increase your numbers. Abraham fell face down and said, to, and, and God said to him, As for me, <clears throat> this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations, and I'll make you very fruitful. I'll make nations out of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as the everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the gener for the generations to come. To be your God and the God of your descendants after you, the whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give an, as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you. I will be their God. Then Abraham, then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, that the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you should be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision. as, And it will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. I believe when you come out the hospital, they still ask the mother parent, do y'all want the children to be circumcised or whatever? They do, they do that because God instituted the Abraham. You ain't got to get it done. It don't matter. That's for another story. But they do that because God started with Abraham, and they still do that to this day. Ask the doctor why they do it next time you're in the hospital. Uh, where I stop? Man? For the generation to come, every male among you. Uh, verse 12. For generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised, including those born in your household or brought with money from a foreigner. Those who are not your offspring, whether born in your household or brought with your money, they must be circumcised. My covenant and my covenant in your flesh is an, is an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been uncircumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Amen. God has said, uh, God said, also said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarah, but her name will be Sarah. I will bless her. And will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of, of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down and he laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? <laughs> will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might have your blessing. Then God said, Yes, your wife Sarah will bear you a son and you will call him Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and I will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, who Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. All right. 
When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went up from him. On that very day, Abraham took his son Ishmael and all those born in his household abroad with his money, every male in his household, and circumcised them, as God told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and his son Ishmael was 13. And I believe at the age of 13, they still celebrate the Jewish uh, bar mitzvah thing, whatever they do for the for the kids when they turn 13. Like, man, it's because of April. Because at 13, Ishmael, uh, at the time of man, they consider like a child growing to a man or something at the age of 13. Abraham and his son Ishmael were both, both circumcised on that very day. And every male in Abraham's household, including those born in his household or brought from a foreigner, was circumcised with them. Genesis 18. Oh, excuse me. God bless y'all being patient with me. And then we got a long way to go, but we're going to get there. Genesis 18. So the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and he saw three men standing nearby. <laughs> and when he saw him, he heard from the entrance. <laughs> Let me read this again. Say so Genesis 18, verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and he saw three men, <laughs> the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He saw three men standing nearby. Abraham was a stranger. And uh, God, he come to you the same way. You, what's up, cousin? I see you. God come to you the same way. If you're if you a worker, he'll, he'll, he'll come meet you at work. If you're a planter, he'll come meet you in the field while you're planting. If you a farmer, you know what I mean. If you're a fisher, he, he, he can come meet you at the boat. He called Pete on the boat, then uh, he'll speak to you any way he chooses to speak to you where you at. Abraham was a stranger, and three strangers came to meet Abraham, all right? Um, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing there, but when he saw them, he heard, to them. he heard from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may wash all your, uh, let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under the tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried to the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three, get three shields of the finest flour. <laughs> get the finest flour, not not the, not the cheap stuff. Get the finest flour. We got the Lord outside, and he and he knitted and baked some bread, and he ran to the herd and selected the choice, a tender calf, and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and some milk, and the calf that he had been that had been prepared, and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. <laughs> Where's your wife, Sarah? They asked him. <laughs> Over there in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will, sh I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah, the whole time Sarah was listening. <laughs> Read the verses. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance of, to the tent which was behind them. Abraham and Sarah were already very old. <laughs> and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. And Sarah had gave up. She was 90 years old. At a certain point in time, man, you can't have children. Like your, 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 organs, your organs shut down. So she listened to these people talking like, man, these people are crazy. Uh, read the verse. Abraham and Sarah were already old. And Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself and she thought, <laughs> after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? <laughs> so Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I'm worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why does Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child now that I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you. At the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was so afraid 
<laughs> Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. Sarah wasn't it. Sarah was in the tent. <clears throat> the Lord said to Abraham, <laughs> he didn't say to Sarah, he said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? <laughs> Sarah was afraid. <laughs> All right, man, I don't want to blow y'all, but yeah. God hear everything. When the man, when, uh, verse 16 say, when the man got up to leave, uh, they looked down towards Sodom and Abraham walked along with them to see with them on their way. Then the Lord said, shall I have from Abraham what I'm about to do? <laughs> Abraham surely will become a great and powerful nation. And all the nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great that their sin and their sin is so grievous that I'm going to, that I'm, that I will go down to see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that is reaching. If not, I will not. The man turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous also with the wicked? I love this right here. Everywhere, I've been a lot of places. Like where and everywhere, I remember, I, I never forget. I'm 27. I've been, uh, I've been a couple places New York, Cali, Colorado, whatever. But uh, everywhere I went, man, I know I know my great grandma. I always feel something special about her, for real, for real. And I feel like God always watching over a place where his where his people at. And everywhere I always went, I always prayed to somewhere. There was it was somebody in the city who was praying, cause I didn't know how to pray like that at the time. I was doing something I ain't really had no business doing. But I always had fear of God in my heart in that city. Like wherever I'm going, I hope it's somebody in that city that know God. I always felt like that. Like, where I promise you I always felt like that because I know God ain't no joke. Listen to Abraham. <clears throat> uh, verse 22, chapter 18, the man toward, uh, verse 23, Abraham appeared, approached the Lord and said, will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the people for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will you not judge all the earth? Uh, will not the judge of all the earth do right? It's Abraham speaking to the Lord. I don't think no other man... Uh, <laughs> I don't think no other man really uh he's speaking to the Lord face to face. You gotta have some heart. You better be on good grounds to be able to talk to God like this. He said, uh, far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said. If I the Lord said, if I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place there for their sake. The Lord said, I spare the whole place for those 50 people. Abraham spoke up again. Now that I've been so bold. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I was going to say, Abraham is a bold person. Now that I've been so bold, Abraham said, as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes. What if the number of the righteous is five less than 50, which is 45? Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five people? If I find 45 there, the Lord said, I would not destroy it. Once again, Abraham spoke to him. What if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of the four that will not destroy. It. Then he said, my Lord, <laughs> my Lord, be not angry with me, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I would not, I would, I would not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of the 20, I would not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry with me, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 could be found there? He answered, for the sake of the 10, I would not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left. Abraham returned home. He couldn't find 10 people in the city. 
But God do know how to save. Amen. Genesis 19 say, uh, two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them. <laughs> it says, two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night, and then you can go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did go with them and enter his house. He prepared a meal for them, a meal for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called the yacht, they called the lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to meet them and uh, shut the door behind them and said, No, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters. These are two angels of God that came to the house of Lot. And the men, both old and young, all surrounded Lot's house and said, Bring them outside so that we can have sex with them. Don't know what in the world these people thinking. Lot went outside, shut the door behind him, and said, Nah, my friends, don't know how to do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters. Lot was willing to give up his two daughters. Uh, I have two daughters that never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you could do whatever them, uh, what you like. But don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. They said, Get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept bringing, whew. They said, we'll, they, yeah. They said, uh, get out, get out of our way, they replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner, and now he wants to play the judge. We'll treat you worse than them. They kept pressing on Lot and moved toward to break down the door, but the men reached outside and pulled Lot back, back into the house and shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, were blinded so that they could not see, could not find the door. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-laws or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. <laughs> I can imagine. These people trying to have sex with angels. The world is going on. But uh, the Lord said, Get them out. We're going to destroy this place. Uh all right. The outcry of the Lord himself, the outcry to the Lord against his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy this place. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. All right. Lot was a man. Lot was a righteous man. God, God called him out and saved him. He was a righteous man. But let me tell you something. When you spend too much time, it's like uh, you spend too much time, you become like a joke. You become like a joke to the people when you when you spend too much time in the world. They don't believe you. Like, where well, you can tell them something about to happen. He was a righteous man, but they read the verse. It sounds a lot. I thought he was joking. I spent too much time hanging with those people. Like, uh, Lot wasn't too much of a stand-up guy. Like, where? He he was a... Mm, he was the type of person. He, he sat down and chilled or whatever. But uh, he wouldn't really... Hit, give me the words. Mm. He spent too much time in the world, so to speak. He should have got up out of there. You know what I mean? That's the whole point. They thought he was joking. Where? All right. Read the verse. His sons thought he was joking. Verse 15. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, hurry, saying, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped, <laughs> when he hesitated, the men grasped his hand in the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out the city. For the Lord was merciful to them. And Lot hesitated to leave. 
Why he hesitated? God said, leave. He hesitated. And if it weren't for the mercy of God, it says, for the Lord was merciful to them. And he, he grabbed their hands. <laughs> like he pushed them out. Y'all, come on. Y'all tripping. As soon as they had been brought to, uh, as soon as they had been, as soon as they had been, excuse me, as soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Do not look back. You really hear that? Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't let, don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you'll be swept away. But Lot said to himself, no, my lords, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. The disaster will overtake me and I die. Look, here's a town near enough to run to and it's small. Let me flee to it. It's very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to them, very well, I will grant you this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the city, the town was called Zor. By this time, Lot reached Zor. The sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down, burned us off on Sodom and Gomorrah. From out of the Lord, from, from the Lord out of the heavens, Thus he overthrew the cities in the entire plain, destroying all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And he told him, don't look back. You know, people, it's like they do that little Medusa junk look at her. You ain't supposed to look at her or whatever. Well, God, he, he say something. You ain't, you, no man can look at God face to face. <laughs> Even his works. Like, where are you doing something? He say, don't look back. Don't look back at her. I keep him moving. Word. Medusa ain't got nothing on the Lord and his power. I can promise you that. Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, toward all the land of the plain, and he saw then smoke rising from the land, like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and he brought Lot out of the Kastrop. Uh, Catastrophic, yeah, that he overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. All right, it says, uh, Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zor. He and his two daughters lived in the cave. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, Our father's old, and there is no man here to give us children, as is and as is the custom all over the earth. Let us go to our father to drink wine and to sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. That night they got dang, that night they got their tent. Uh, they got their father to drink wine and the oldest daughter went in to sleep with him. She was not aware. He was not aware when she laid down or when she got up. The next day, La was bent. <laughs> dang. The next day, the, the oldest daughter said to the younger, last night I slept with my father. Let's get him drunk. Let's let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and sleep with him, so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got, so they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him again, and he was not aware of it when she lay down and when she got up. Both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The oldest daughter had a son, and she named him Moab, and he is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a uh, son and she became and she named him Ben Ami. He is the father of the moral rights of today. Right. Says uh, Genesis chapter twenty. Oh, excuse. Me. As the first case of incest, I believe. <laughs> I ain't want to throw that joke out there, but yeah, yeah, they thought it was. Serving a job. That's another story for another day. Genesis chapter 20 say, verse 1. Now Abraham moved on from there into the region of Negev and lived between conditions, sir. For a while he stayed in Gerar. And there Abraham said to his wife, Sarah, she is my sister. Then Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent for Sarah and took her. Abraham ain't learned nothing the first time. He lied again. <laughs> But God said to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead. <laughs> God speaks. When something ain't going right, you know you ain't supposed to do something right, God will speak to you in a dream or something. 
I promise you. Especially if you got one of his peoples in some in a situation that they shouldn't be in or something. I promise you. He will warn you. You shouldn't be messing with this person or that person. All right? But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Now Abimelech had not gone near her. So he said, Lord, will you dest destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? It wasn't like he was trying to do this uh, uh, deliberately. Abraham lied, you see. This man was a man, he's a man who feared God. He said, Lord, will you, de will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say he is my brother? I have done this with clear, clear conscience and clean hands. Then God said to him in a dream, yes, I know you have done this with clean conscience. And so I have also kept you from sinning against me. Thank you. That is why I did not let you touch him. Bless you. Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. And she and he will pray for you, and you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all of those and all who belong to you will die. Early the next morning, Bimelech, <laughs> early the next morning, Bimelech summoned all his officials, and when he told them what happened, they were very much afraid. I'd have been scared too. Then Abimelech called Abram and said, uh, "Got watch people he's sleeping with. Uh, where ain't no telling who married to who, whatever. Where." Then Abimelech called uh, early the next morning. Abimelech summoned all his officials when they told him what happened. They were very much afraid. And Abimelech called Abraham and said, "What have you done to us, man? How have you wronged us? How have we? How have I wronged you uh, that you have brought such great guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have done things to me that should never be done." And Abimelech asked Abraham, "What was your reason for doing this?" Abraham said, I said to myself, there is surely no fear of God in this place. Yeah. Abraham said to himself, Abraham, he, he, he took God at his word. Sometimes we still get nervous and upset. You judge a book by its cup. You don't never know what you don't never know what another person might have in their heart just because they this way, that way. That person probably fear God the same exact way you do. King Abimelech did. Abraham ain't know it though. Abraham said, I said to myself, there is no fear of God in this place. And they will surely kill me because of my wife. Besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, though not of my mother. And she became my wife. And when God had me to wander from my father's household, I said to her, this is how you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech brought his sheep and cattle, and male and female, uh, slaves, and gave them to Abraham. And he returned to Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, my land is before you. Live wherever you like. To Sarah, he said, I'm giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is the cover of the offense against you before all who are with you. You are completely vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech, his wife and his female slave so that they could have children again. For the Lord had kept all the women in Abimelech's household from conceiving because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. Genesis 21 say, uh, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he, what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The child grew and was weaned. And one day Isaac was weaned, uh, Abraham the child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Give rid of the slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham so greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to your, listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. All right. 
I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar, and he sent them on their shoulders, and then he sent her off with the boy. She went on her way, and she wandered in the desert of Bathsheba. When the water, when the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bush shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. It's always at a at a low point in time, at a hard point in time when God stepped in. Heck, Abraham sent this girl away with nothing, with just her and her son. They say when the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under the bushes. And then she set off and sat down under the bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to cry. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is what, what is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him to a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert of McCain and Archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. At that time, Abimelech and Fakal, the commander of his forces, said to Abraham, God is with you in everything you do. Now swear to me before God that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or my descendants. Show me the show me show to me and the country where you now reside as a foreign, the same kindness I have shown you, Abraham said. I swear. Then Abraham, then Abraham complained to Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servants had seized. But Abimelech said, I don't know who has done this. You did not tell me. And I heard about it only today. So Abraham brought sheep and cattle and gave them to, to Abimelech. And the two made a treaty. Abraham set apart seven ill lambs from the flock. And Abimelech asked him, what is the meaning of these seven ill lambs you have set apart by themselves? He replied, accept these seven lambs from my hand as a witness that I dug this well. So that place was called Bathsheba because of the two men swore an oath there. And the treaty had been made that Bathsheba, Abimelech, and Fakal, the commander of his forces, returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted the terrorist tree in Bathsheba, and the tree is called on the name of the Lord, the eternal God. And Abraham stayed in the land of Philistines for a long time. All right. And I'm going to stop at 23. Man. All right. God bless y'all being patient with me. Genesis 22 says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abram, here I am. Then God said, take your son, your only son, who you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice when there is a burnt offering on the mountain, I will show you. Abraham ain't argue with God. He got up. Abraham done did a whole lot of bumping and scraping uh, all this time. God promised him a son, and the son came at his old age. Abraham was as good as dead when his son Isaac was born. If God can give me a son in my good old age, he can do anything. Abraham already believed this in his mind. Uh, early the next morning, God, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey, took with him two servants and his son Isaac. He had enough wood for the burnt offering, set out to the place God told him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place from a distance. He said to his servant, stay here with me with the donkey while me and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we'll come back to you. Abraham already knew before he left he was coming back. Anytime God gave you a test, he already he already gave you the answer. And Abraham had the answer in his heart. Uh, the Lord told him that your that the blessing gonna come through your son Isaac, and he was holding on to that with everything. God gave him Isaac in a good old age. Uh, Abraham ain't argue with God. Abraham uh, took the wood to burn off and placed it on his son Isaac and carried a. Uh, and he and Isaac himself carried the fire in the night. The two of them went up together. Isaac spoke up. This ain't Isaac's first time doing this. He didn't did this plenty of times. And he like, Pop, what's going on? He said, uh, Father. And Abraham said, Yes, my son. 
The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son, and yes, he will. God ain't going to never ask you to do nothing. He ain't never willing to do himself. In fact, he don't want he, he, he not even going to have you required to go all the way because you, it's impossible for you to go all the way for God. If God don't go all the way for himself, it'll never get done. God himself will provide a lamb, Abraham said, for the burnt offering. Thank you. And the two of them went on together. And when they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld him from me. Your only son who you love. You, you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham ain't withhold his only son. And thank God that he ain't withhold his only son from us, Jesus Christ. Uh, and Abraham looked up in the thicket and saw a ram caught by his horns. And he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it on the, uh, as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountain, the Lord will provide. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the city, of the cities that are enemies, and through your offspring, I love the way the King James Version says, it says, through your seed, capital S, uh, uh, the same seed that was the Lord said to to the serpent, uh, I'll put enmity between your offspring and her offspring to the woman's offspring. They all been waiting on Jesus. Jesus, the whole promise of everything being fulfilled. Yeah. It says, uh, until your until your seed to your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham went. Returned to his servants, and they set off together in Bathsheba, and Abraham stayed in Bathsheba. And sometime later, Abraham was told, Micaiah is also a mother. She has born sons to your brother Nor. Uts is the firstborn. Buts, his brother Camille, the father Aram, Kiz, y'all forgive me for these names, Hazo, Padash, Jelef, Badul. Badul became the father of Rebekah. Uh, Micaiah bore these eight sons to Abraham's brothers Nor, and he served his concubine, whose name was Ramor. And Ramor also had sons, Tebal, Gahan, Teresh, and Micaiah. Right, I'm going to stop there and pick up at chapter 23 tomorrow. God bless you all being patient with me. Uh, I like the one when the Lord got up. Uh, and, Ain't gonna ask y'all do now. He ain't never want to do himself, man. Before he gave you the test, he always gave you the answer. Abraham reasoned his mind for it. God even tested him. You gave me my son. If you ask him for him, you can bring him back from the dead if you want to. Before it was even a resurrection spoke of or thought of. Once you take God at his word, man, you keep taking him at his word, no matter what. Day after day, it might not even make sense to you, but you keep taking him at his word and see what happens. Uh, Sometimes things seem crazy, but I believe the Bible said the righteous walk by faith and not by sight. Not everything going to make sense to you. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, they trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways. Submit to him and he will direct your paths. Amen. Hope y'all have a blessed day. Enjoy y'all day. Today, Friday or something with a uh, 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 Craig. Smoke to say the deep, but they Friday, you ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Some of y'all got jobs or whatever. Everybody got something they got to do. Y'all keep putting God first, and he'll take care of the rest of the way for y'all. All right? Y'all keep. Jesus, Lord Jesus said, you love me, keep my commands, man. He'll ask the Father and give you the Holy Spirit. Y'all keep asking the Lord. And keep asking, seeking the Lord's face and God's direction. Y'all pray for me, I pray for y'all. Bless y'all.